Today's dedication is for Terax, who gave me a very generous one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon. York Moth versus Ivy. With some fast mana in hand is good, so we will certainly keep. So it is a swamp, we are on the play of course, so get down at the fast mana into the Coalition Relic. And we can just put a counter on that now. Our opponent just starts off with a blue source. And there is a reassembling skeleton for us. The Coalition Relic going to remove a counter and make a black mana for us. So we'll just speed out our commander now. And I uh, don't think we're too desperate to get down the reassembling skeleton just yet. Although we could have gone for sacrificing it in response to some kind of removal. Maybe they've got Pongify. But obviously decided to risk putting a, uh, a counter on that. So we see Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief. Which is soon about to hit the command zone again. Not much point in proliferating on the Coalition Relic. It all costs us two mana and then this will just gain us two mana back. So we'll take the one mana at the moment. Throw down a Swamp. I think we can get the Necro Skitter going. And this thing will steal our opponent's creatures whenever they die with a plus counter on them. So let's go for the Weapon Craft Enthusiast now that we've drawn into that. That will make us a couple of Servo Tokens. And yeah, our opponent sees what's about to go down here. Decided to risk getting down the Ivy in the hope that we didn't get down any creatures. But we were of course about to do that. So drawing into just some more mana. Up against Kaikar this time with a much worse hand. We'll have to go down a card on that one I think. Okay, just <laughs> once again being punished by Magic Online with near enough no lands there. So we're going down two cards and yeah, we were never going to do anything this game. We'll see what Kai Car's got in store for us. Okay, a Vamp Tutor there. So we might be able to get down a, uh, a Necropotence if we're lucky. So I probably have to go for that now and hope that they don't have Counter Magic for the actual Necropotence, which we will draw into next turn. Can't play it next turn, so we'll just hope, like I said, that they don't have any counter magic on turn 3. We could always try and take our opponent off blue mana with the strip mine on turn 2, I suppose. Yeah, and there's a talisman, so they'll be on boros mana. They might struggle on blue mana, though. Might be worth doing that. Got to play to our outs, unfortunately, so there's the necropotence. We'll lose a turn here. And they might, seeing as how that was such an aggressive play, they might assume that we tutored for that with the vamp tutor. Although we didn't know about their talisman before we went for the Vampiric Tutor. Okay, but they do get into more blue mana unfortunately. They do still not have a double blue at least. They might still struggle to get into a fourth piece of mana for the Kai Car. And they were tapping into something there but decided not to go for it. There's a Crucible of Worlds. So if we can't get down the Necropotence due to a counter spell. We could always go Crucible of Worlds and do the spiky play of Strip Mines and all that. Not typically plays I like to make, but the uh, lobby's been pretty cutthroat tonight, so decided to pull out a stronger deck and start making stronger plays against my opponent. Alright, not seeing our opponent's commander. It is first a SRAM Senior Edificer. Uh, there is a Reality Chip, which is not equipped, so can't play cards off the top just yet. They did tap down their mana in order to do that, though, of course, so argument to be made for going for the Crucible. So that we can guarantee land drops for the rest of the game. But I'm fine to go Necropotence here and refill our hand. Alright, and we do manage to get into another land in the Snow-Covered Swamp. If we decide not to go for the Strip Mine thing. It's hard to know if to go for plays like that. Because I'm still not sure what type of player my opponent is. But it is Kai Car, so... I'm not sure how much leeway I really want to give a Kai Car player, to be honest. Yeah, so our opponent does go for getting Kai Car into play. So, yeah, we're already at a pretty... Big disadvantage, I think. So I think we are going to have to go for the strip mine. SRAM hits us for two. So we do, of course, not draw any cards. Thanks to the Necropotence, we'll get down the Crucible of Worlds. And play the strip mine. Get rid of their blue mana. And I'm happy to not keep going for strip mine now that they don't have any blue mana. It's really counter magic that I'm worried about. Put another life into Necropotence. Alright, gets us into Zulaport Cutthroat. Okay, a Sword of the Animist for our opponents, so going to be able to get down some blue mana with that. Drawing a card to SRAM and making a token. And now a Lightning Greave, so likely goes on the Kai Car and we won't be able to use any of our spot removal. We draw to the SRAM again. 
can't equip up the Sword of the Animus, so still stuck on the blue mana. Decided on the Lightning Greaves instead, of course. I could always go for Sacrificing the Spirits to put the Sword of the Animist onto something, which is probably a good idea. So I decided to re-equip the Lightning Greaves. Probably, yeah, a good idea to put the Sword on the Kai Car. And that's exactly what they do here. So just swinging in with their commander will take four commander damage. Alright, so could obviously play a Marsh Flats from the bin. Uh, maybe play a Strip Mine just for the sake of having it in play before it gets exiled. We can threaten our opponent with it. I'm thinking of going for Rite of Bells Unlock and getting this demon into play as soon as possible. Obviously the tokens are good with the Yorg Moth as well. Get rid of the SRAM. So yeah, play the Strip Mine but not going to crack it now. And that brings in some Sebmican and Clerics. Uh, put another life into Necropotence and we will pass. Alright, and our opponent did want some blue mana there so Whirlwind of Thor is a very good one. And then one of the spirits is sacrificed and Ray of Master Smith into play. So the commander going to gain double strike and that will be 12 commander damage onto us. So we need to be getting into a board wipe pretty soon. Might have to go very heavy into the Necropotence. Get a couple more cleric tokens to the right of Bells Unlock. So let's throw out a swamp and it can be our commander. And we'll put a swift foot boots onto that. Then we'll have to go after the Ray Av. So sacrifice a cleric token to do that. Draws us into a swamp and draw into a spawning pit. We're down to 14 unfortunately. So we're going to have to be careful but let's try to get into a board wipe of some kind maybe. We might be able to just rely on a blocker from the right of Bells and Lock. So maybe we don't have to go crazy with the Necropotence now that we've got rid of the double strike. So yeah I think we're okay to just leave it there. Um, Liliana I don't see being much use to us. Would discard the Nether Traitor because we'll be able to cheat it out when we sacrifice a cleric but it does of course get exiled thanks to the Necropotence. Halvar got a battle now and that is double strike again. So we're going to take another hit for eight. Yeah, unfortunately struggled on mana this game turn eight and not having too much in the form of ramp because what we could have done was gone for the proliferate with Yorg Moth and got the demon in the way. Alright, and the Halvar going to put the Lightning Greaves onto itself, so two creatures with double strike now. So we're going to have to do some chump blocking here. The Sword of the Animus continuing to fix the blue mana. So we'll go through to the blocking phase. We can block the Halvar. And we're going to take eight, which means we'll be on six. We'll go down to five with the Yorgamoth, so put a minus counter on the SRAM. And the Halvar is still considered blocked, of course. Suppose we could go for a minus counter onto the Kai Car as well, so that we can start proliferating, seeing as how proliferate doesn't target. Not worthy that we've drawn into Dictate of Erebos, so yeah, it's just lack of mana, unfortunately. Because we've got the small creatures that could make use of a Dictate of Erebos. Alright, so let's go for minus counter onto Kai Car in response to the Lightning Greaves. Put say minus counter on that. There's a Toxic Deluge. Uh, <laughs> gonna have to gain some life somehow. Problem is now our opponent has the island held up. So get down at the demon, play the Zulaport Cutthroat. Be nice to get down Reassembling Skeleton or Nether Traitor first, but yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to. I think it's just going to have to be getting rid of the island. Alright, our opponent didn't float the blue mana, so I don't think he has a counter spell in hand. And then it can be... Uh, Three life into this. One so that we don't die and two so that we keep the Yorg Moth in play. Also this will get rid of the Kai Car, which does have evasion. They will be able to replay it next turn and they will have the Lightning Greaves but we've got the Demon in the way now. And I'm happy to throw it in the way of the Kai Car because we're going to have to sacrifice something to the Demon anyway. Gain one life to the Zulaport Cutthroat. Not worthy that we are at 20 points of commander damage. So just a case of seeing how long we can last really. <laughs> there is a Boros Charm, so I don't even need to get down the commander, just straight up for damage to us. Obviously didn't do too well with our opening hand there, so I think we'll play another game and see if we can get off to a better start. Up against another powerful one, it's Breya this time. Um, yeah, we can crack an Expedition map on turn two, so yeah, we'll try that. We're on the uh, play, or the draw even. And it's a strip mine from our opponent, so yeah, now I wonder if we... Should even bother going for the expedition map. They might just wait to crack that now that they've seen this thing. 
They might like the idea of an Urborg though, because we can fix their black mana with it. Maybe they'll struggle on black mana. Apparently not. That is an underground river. Into the red mana with a talisman. Alright, so let's get down a swamp. So I'm just deciding to crack my expedition map now for the ancient tomb and that might have our opponents save the strip mine. Okay, a lightning greaves, so don't have any instant speed mana anyway. And an emery lurker of the lock, so uh, they can't play anything out of the bin there, but putting haste on it anyway. Anointed procession, crawl space, and a cool delta forge forgemaster. Uh, they hit us for one with the merfolk. Alright, so there's a spawning pit. Let's drop the ancient tomb into the mine stone. Uh, that can be a weapon craft enthusiast. Make some servos with that as ever. Our opponent continuing to set up. It is Panharmonicon before the Brayer comes down. Alright, there is a Zulaport Cutthroat for us. So they can deal 3 damage to the Lolf is the problem. Although they won't be able to do it straight away. So maybe it's worth getting that going. Can always go for the Kakusho as well, of course. I think Lolf is good here though. And we'll go for the Zero, lose a life and draw a card. Okay, Giraffe's Messenger, so another combo piece. Pass the turn at that. Now seeing a maze of it, so really wanting us to stay out of combat. Luckily we do have combos in the deck, like I said. And I'm really glad I didn't go for the Urborg now, because that would have been another black mana for them. They could have tapped that for mana, which they can't at the moment. <laughs> and they storm the vault. So really wanting to set up before the Brayer comes out. How many of you control? Five or more artifacts transform it. Okay, well they'll certainly have five or more artifacts. Dreadhorde invasion for us. So maybe we get down the Orgmoth through any potential counter magic now. Uh, we can't limit break the Lolth, unfortunately. But I don't know if I'm too worried about that anyway. Go for the Orgmoth. So maybe it's worth just getting the Dreadhorde invasion on the go at this point. So if we're not too worried about the limit break on the Lolth, maybe we're best just making more creatures and that makes it more of a threat. Makes our Yorgmoth more of a threat to the Brea as soon as it comes down. Because Brea will be able to get rid of the Yorg Moth. Um, yeah, so let's go Dread Horde Invasion as well. The sooner we get that going, the better. And now we're set up for at least um, being able to get rid of our opponent's commander and refill our hand in doing so. More strange mana, a buried ruin this time. Yeah, they're still struggling on white mana, of course. So Ethereum Sculptor, one card in hand. And now we see a crawl space from our opponent, thanks to the Emery, so... Yeah, the limit break from the Lolth not going to be quite as good. So they get a Storm the Vault, and that will fix their blue mana for pretty much the rest of the game, I think. But we're not looking like we're in the worst position. They can have all the mana they want as long as they don't have cards in hand. And there's a Damnation. So we'll go for the zero on Lolth to draw a card. Gets us into the land for the turn. So let's start doing some Giraffe's Messenger and Zulaport Cutthroat stuff here. Play out the messenger. Our opponent loses two life when it enters, of course. Um, get down at the Zulaport Cutthroat as well. And then we might as well throw out the spawning pit while we're at it. I'll do some stuff at the end of my opponent's turn, then we can maximise the number of cards that we keep hold of. Um, yeah, the crawl space we're not that bothered about. Just need to hope that our opponent keeps missing on the colours. A soul ring for our opponent, still one card in hand. Tap down the strip mine to do it, didn't have to pay thanks to the Ethereum Sculptor, but that does mean that this is shields down at the moment. Seven blue mana from the um, the Academy. Oh, and they do have white mana. One mana of any colour from this. Right, I had it in my head that they couldn't make white mana. So they've taken their time, but down comes Brea. And now with that on the stack, let's go for Yorgmoth. Minus counter onto the Brayer will get rid of the Giraffe's Messenger, which will come back with Undying. Put a loyalty counter on the Lolth and trigger the Zulaport Cutthroat for a drain. Our opponent loses two life to the Giraffe's Messenger again. We drew into a Bloodgast, another minus counter on the Brayer, get rid of a Servo this time. Trigger Zulaport and the Lolth again. Alright, and there's a Cryptgast for some more mana for us. Uh, Brea, get rid of the zombie army token this time. And there's a Baleful Mastery, we don't have the black mana held up for it anyway. So we'll get rid of the Brea before they are able to activate that. They do have the mana to activate it, but they'll have to sacrifice some difficult artifacts. 
and they decide not to, so I dare say their hope is to get out the Thopters now, and then replay the Brea next turn, and they'll have the Thopters in play already. Obviously getting two pairs of Thopters, thanks to the Panharmonicon. Emery targeting the Kuldotha Forge Master. Uh, they do have a Lightning Greaves for that thing, so we might have to make some difficult decisions ourselves here. Down comes the Forge Master, I'll see if they want to equip the Lightning Greaves to that. Yes, they do. So it'll be one, two, three, four, and five creatures going to be sacked here, which is a shame, but I think we'll still be all right. We can make more tokens next turn with the Lolth. So we clear our board, but we do manage to get rid of the Kuldotha. We've drawn into a Strip Mine. There's a Belfal Mastery we mentioned. Machaeus is a combo piece. Butcher Ghoul, another combo piece. Uh, so the question is, do we get rid of their White Mana with the Strip Mine? Or the Vault of Catla can. They've got floating mana now, which they could use to get rid of the Buried Ruin. Not worthy that the Lolth is at 10 loyalty. Okay, so we get round to our turn, lose a life, make a uh, zombie token, draw into another land. Would be nice to get down Kakusho and the Machaeus, of course, but I'm not sure Machaeus is going to do us all that much good this game, unfortunately. Let's get down the Crypt Ghast for some ramp. Minus on the Lolth. And then we effectively want to hold up the Belfour Mastery, I think. Um, let's get down the Blood Gas now. Not going to extort. Could get down a Swamp because it's two more mana. And maybe Machaeus is alright then. Let's sacrifice, put a minus counter on the Ethereum Sculptor. Get rid of the Blood Gas to do that. Alright, there's a Sol Ring, so we might as well upgrade the Mind Stone to a Sol Ring. And then play the Strip Mine. Brings back the Blood Ghast. Sacrifice Strip Mine to get rid of this thing. So that they pretty much have to tap out into Brea. Then I suppose Everflowing Chalice for just one mana will be fine. Or that it just produces one mana. And then I think we're okay to just hold up a four mana Baleful Mastery at that point. Just in case our opponent gets down the Kuldotha Forge Master again. We don't have to sacrifice our entire board. I don't think we'll be able to get rid of Brea. And this thing in one turn. So we'll leave it at that. Disarming on a mere battle sphere. Not all that worried about a mere battle sphere, so that's fine. It does trigger twice to make a bunch of tokens, which might be relevant against uh, Dictate of Erebo, something like that. Lightning Greaves going on to the mere battle sphere, so. Hmm. Yeah, we could take eight damage here, and then whatever we take to that thing, maybe we are worried about it actually. So let's go for casting. The Baleful Mastery, which is exactly why I held it up for some kind of surprise like that. Unfortunately, the Lightning Greaves won't just fall off Emery here. It will stay on if the ability fizzles. Um, could have paid the Extort there as well, because I've got a mana floating over here that I didn't notice. And the Thopters are going to swing in. We do have a couple of Spider Reachers here. Um, yeah, not particularly worried about Lolth taking four here. Pretty easy to add some uh, loyalty to that. In fact, we're going to do that right now. I will draw a card, get rid of this Ethereum Sculptor, sacrifice the Zombie Army token before we get another one. There is a Grim Harry Specs. Does not trigger on tokens, unfortunately. Will trigger on a Butcher Ghoul, though. So around to our turn again. Dreadhorde Invasion continuing to make tokens for us. And there is a Hangabat Walker as well. If we're ever worried about the Thopters swinging into us, we'll defend ourselves against Thopters with Thopters. Let's... Go for the Lolth, a zero ability to draw another card. Alright, that's a Nest of Scarabs, so that's a really good draw. Means we can wipe out our opponent's entire board pretty much, so we'll do that now. And it's pretty useful to us that all our opponent's creatures are one toughness creatures, so we can replace all of those on this side with a bunch of insects on our side. Our opponent sees that. Um, we are losing life every time we do that, thanks to... Uh, the Zulaport Cutthroat going down, so in order to wipe our opponent's board, we would have taken, uh, that's 12 creatures, so 12 life. But maybe in the 12 cards, the client isn't going to show us and I've just been booted into the lobby. Yeah, I hope in the top 12 cards we would have got into an Aristocrat effect. And that could have negated some of the uh, life that we were taking there, as well as draining our opponent out. Probably would have jammed down the Cuckoo Show, ready for perhaps a Machaeus next turn. Maybe we could have done both of those in the same turn, I'm not sure. I think I had four untapped swamps there, so probably could have done that. And that would have drained our opponent for ten in total. 
And that probably could have comboed out on our opponent as well, actually, because we could have put a minus counter on the Kakusho to remove the plus counter from the Undying, and, well, you probably know all the chains better than I do anyway. That was a couple of good games from a spectator's perspective, I think, so hopefully you all enjoyed it. Be sure to consider donating on Patreon via the link in the description below. Huge thank you to those of you who do that already. I'm Tribal Kai. Thank you for watching.